do, what the baddest do, the baddest do, me the baddest, ooh. So, have you ever just seen something and gotten that immediate spark of inspiration? Well, that's what happened to me when I saw the teaser image of Ari's new outfit from the new KDA comeback single release, The Baddest. I can't help it, I'm a sucker for black and lace. And upon seeing this image, I got the immediate urge to make it. Especially because I realized that I could use my Sir Integra wig with little to no styling, and I had some other materials on hand that would work well for this cosplay. And with this whole self-isolation and quarantine, if I get inspired to work on a cosplay, I'm gonna dive in. Because it's especially hard finding motivation right now when there's no conventions and you can't go derp around with your friends. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how I made Ari's The Baddest Look in 24 hours before the release of the song. So let's get started. I've had this old Hot Topic Gothic dress for over a decade and never wear it anymore. So I'm going to cut it up and alter it since it's fairly similar to Ari's top. I also had some leftover black lace fabric for the cutout and the sleeves. Another article of clothing I decided to use is this super tiny and revealing bodysuit I got from like Fashion Nova or somewhere and never even worn it once. Why did I even buy it? Anyway, I'll be using it for the top as well. I threw on the Hot Topic dress and marked where I wanted to cut while it was on my body so I could get an accurate indication on where everything would lay. Since this dress has very little seam allowance, I didn't want to just start cutting into it, so I seam ripped an opening in the side seams under the armpit to get a starting point going. Then I began to cut along the markings I made, leaving about one half of an inch of extra fabric so that I can serge and hem it later. I didn't cut through the center so that I could leave a longer length of the decorative buttons since that part also closely matched Ari's top. I didn't do much calculating for the back, just marked and cut straight across. This is what I'm left with. I then proceed to carefully seam rip the collar off. Once detached, I set them aside for later. Next, I hem around the top where we had previously cut. I used my serger and folded it up once to hem, or you can just fold it up twice to hide the raw edges for the hem if you don't have a serger. Now that the top is all hemmed up, I can install a new zipper after seam ripping out the old one, of course, because we still need that seam allowance left. Line it up to where you need it to be and pin it in place. I attempted a lapped zipper so it wouldn't be noticeable since mine doesn't match the black top and I guess it was close enough. Now that the zipper is installed and functioning properly, we can move back onto the collar. Since I'm turning this folded collar into a standing collar, I needed to take some of the extra length off of the collar pieces so that it would sit nicely on my neck instead of being up to my chin or something. Once they were the right size, I pinned them back onto the neckline and sewed it up. Awesome, things are coming along well. But after thinking about it for a bit, I decided to create some new puff sleeves from scratch since these were just a little bit too small for the look that I was going for. I once again carefully seam ripped off the sleeves in order to salvage any bit of seam allowance that I could. Because as I said earlier, there is very little seam allowance and I wanted to be able to properly sew on the new sleeves.
I harvested the elastic from the old sleeves and made sure to keep them to use them on the new sleeves. That way I could get the same amount of gather and look as the other ones with the bigger sleeves. After removing the elastic, I ironed out the sleeve so that I could use it to make my new pattern. To make the new sleeve pattern, I grabbed some tracing paper and folded the old sleeve in half to use as my base. Then I traced around it and extended the length of the sleeve by about 3 to 4 inches at the bottom. Remember to mark that it will be cut on the fold so you don't forget. Then just cut it out. Once I got the new sleeve pattern ready, I grabbed some similar black fabric, lined up the sleeve on the fold and cut it out. Did this twice to get both sleeves. To get the poofiness back, I sewed a gathering stitch along the edge of the top of the sleeves and used the elastic we harvested earlier to gather the bottom of the sleeves. To sew the elastic on and create the proper gathers, I had to stretch it while I was sewing, which can be really tricky at first, but you just gotta go slowly and take your time. Once finished, you can see we achieved the same gathering effect as the original sleeves. After sewing the gathering stitch on the top of the sleeve, I carefully pulled the threads from either side so that it created even gathers until it was able to properly fit into the armhole. Then sewed the sides together. Now it's time to attach the new sleeves. I matched the seams and pinned the top of the sleeve to the armhole and sewed all the way around on both sides. That's a good looking sleeve. This is what I've got so far. The top of the top, if that makes sense, is basically done. So the next step is attaching it to the bodysuit and adding the lace. I put everything on so I would know where to add the lace and pinned it down while wearing it in order to get accurate placements. Then I sewed it all together. The last part to create in order to finish the top fully are the lace sleeves. To do this, I draped the lace around my arm and pinned it so that it would be nice and fitted. Released my arm from the lace tube, cut it out, and then sewed a straight stitch along where I pinned. Another little detail I noticed were her sleeve cuffs, so I whipped up a quick pattern for that too, and then cut it out of some scrap pleather fabric that I happened to have laying around. I tried it on really quick to make sure that it fit before sewing, and once sewn, this is what you'll get. Now it's time to tackle the accessories, starting with the fox ears. I drew the ears like I wanted on paper and cut it down until I achieved the shape that I wanted. Next, I transferred the paper pattern onto Warbla. Using my craft scissors, not fabric scissors, I cut out the Warbla shapes.
Once that was done, I grabbed some fluffy faux fur fabric that I already had on hand and cut those same shapes out again, except instead of two, you will need to have four pieces out of the fabric so that they can be sewn together. After tracing the shapes onto the fur, don't forget to add seam allowance. Instead of using scissors to cut out the fur, I used a box cutter. A very lovely fancy one in fact from Fomore, and you can use code MIRA20 for 20% off. The reason I used a box cutter is so that it would only cut the fabric backing instead of chopping the fur too. Learned this nifty trick from Kinpatsu Cosplay. Once the pieces are cut, I used a brush to comb the fur into the same direction. Time to sandwich them, right sides together, pin, and then sew all the way around. I cut down the seam allowance after sewing to help reduce bulk, then turn them right side out. I brushed around the seams to release any hairs that may have gotten tucked into it. So my camera died, so I didn't get to film it, but I used a heat gun to shape the warble ears into a more curved, natural shape. Then I stuffed the ears into our um, fuzzy ear pockets. <laughs> To keep the warbler from slipping out, I put hot glue on the inside between it and the fur. This also molds the outside fur to the curved shape of the warbler. Now that the ears are assembled, I cut down the fur to try to make them look more like fox ears and not all super shaggy. See the difference between leaving it as is and giving it a nice grooming? Definitely looks more like Ari's ears now. The next step was to give the ears some color. Since I was in a hurry, I didn't want to try and set up my airbrush, so I experimented with India ink. It didn't work well. <laughs> After leaving it overnight, it didn't really dry properly. So the next day, I just hit it with some eyeshadows from my Alexis Stone palette. Not a great solution for something you want to wear long term or near water, but definitely awesome for when you're in a hurry. To keep the ears on my head, I just glued on some wig combs and stuck those into the wefts of my wig. It stays on decently, at least for a photo shoot. The next step is making her hair clips. I just so happened to have a silicone mold with a similar diamond shape and at first thought to use foam clay for it. However, foam clay takes about 24 to 48 hours to fully dry and I wanted this done by that night. So I ended up opting for Sculpey, which is a type of baking clay. After kneading it until soft, I worked the Sculpey into the mold. Next, I carefully popped the Sculpey out from the mold, very careful to not accidentally warp it. Then I pressed a bead into the center, marking its placement so I could glue it there securely once the Sculpey had baked.
I removed the bead by putting the tip of my seam ripper into the bead hole and lightly pulling up. See the indentation it left behind? That will cradle the bead later so that it won't be protruding out. Now it's time to throw them in the oven. Once the clay is finished baking, it's time to paint them. I used plaid paints, one being an outdoor black paint and the other was a brushed metal type paint. I mixed the two together to give me a shiny black metal color, which is really hard to see on camera, but trust me, it's quite pretty. Also, go ahead and grab a smaller paintbrush and not a huge foam brush like me. It was a mess. A tiny paintbrush makes for a much cleaner paint job. After the paint dries, I glued on the beads and got ready to mount the Sculpey accessories I'd made onto bobby pins. This worked fine for the photo shoot, but because of how smooth the bobby pins were, the hot glue wouldn't stay on and by the end they had come detached. Using a stronger glue like E6000 along with a wider bobby pin would make them work a lot better. Also, roughing up the surface of the pins in the back of the Sculpey with sandpaper would help them stick to each other a little bit better. And lastly, to make her holographic whiskers, I just sketched the shapes I wanted out onto paper and transferred them to this beautiful holographic heat transfer vinyl I just so happened to have left over after experimenting with my brother's scan and cut machine. I cut them all out and used spirit gum to stick them to my cheeks. It ended up being perfect for Ari's makeup look. And now it's time to reveal this cosplay look that I threw together in 24 hours. There it is, my 24 hour thrown together cosplay. But honestly, I love the way that it turned out and the process was really fun. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you want to keep updated on new videos, you can click that subscribe button as well as the bell notification. You can also uh, connect with me on social media. I am at Mirror Scarlet TV on almost every platform. I also live stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to chat there and hang out, that is the best place to do it. I hope that you take good care of yourself, drink a lot of water, and I will see you next time. Bye!